Hi everybody. Today we're going to talk about contingencies. When you buy a house, you enter a contract. The buyer has three primary contingencies. One is for inspections, one is for loan, and the other is appraisals. If one of those uh, contingencies doesn't work out, you know, let's say you do a, a home inspection and the guy says the building's going to fall down, you probably aren't going to want to buy it, so you back out of the deal. And you're okay backing out of a deal as long as you haven't removed those three contingencies. So the buyer's investigation, so it's not just a home inspection, it's also title. You got to make sure the title's free and clear, it can be transferred to you. You have to make sure the property's insurable. You know, it might be in a flood zone, a fire zone area, something like that, which would make it something that uh, insurance companies may not insure. So those are all parts of the inspection process. I would also say one of the most overlooked things is the um, is a nuisance concept. You know, you go there, you see the house, you fall in love with the house, but you fail to recognize that there's a railroad track, you know, one house away, and that train goes by at three o'clock in the morning every morning just as a silly example. But um, you want to make sure you check the area out thoroughly, not just the home. So as far as the loan appraisal goes, you know, pretty straightforward. If you've got your pre-approval letter from a legitimate lender, you're probably going to be okay. You just need the appraisal to come in at value. So, and if those two things happen, you're probably going to get your loan approved. Unless something happens, you lose your job or something like that. The third one is the appraisal. The appraisal is a little tricky. Um, you know, I always tell everyone, it's as much art as it is science. So oftentimes an appraisal will come in right at value. Well, if they didn't know what the value was, you can bet they wouldn't hit that number. But they do. They know what number it is the house is being sold for, and they basically try to hit that number if they can justify it. Sometimes it'll come in low. Most of the time it'll come in at value. And sometimes it'll come in over, but rarely very much over. Rarely, I mean, if it's coming in way over, there's something wrong with the pricing. Uh, if it comes in low, people worry about, you know, what if it comes in low? Well, if it comes in low, you tell the seller, if you're the buyer, you tell the seller, hey, this is an independent third party, and this is the valuation they came up with. I really want the house. I really love the house, and I'm willing to pay fair market value for the house. I don't know how excited I am about paying more than the house is worth. So you're hoping the seller will turn around and say, you know, you're right. The, uh, the value should you know, I will accept this value as determined by an independent third party. Sometimes they'll say, no, I think your, your appraiser doesn't know what he's doing. I'm going to take my chances. Try another lender. Let's get another appraisal. Let's see what happens. Okay. You know, by the way, if it's an FHA appraisal for an FHA loan and it doesn't come in, the next buyer, if it's an FHA buyer, is going to have to use that same appraisal for a period of six months. So they can't just get a new FHA appraisal like you can a conventional loan. Um, also, you sometimes you'll compromise. Sometimes the seller will say, look, I'll take half off if you come up another half. The difference is the seller, you know, he's going to get a check at the end of the day. As a buyer, that's cash money. So you have to make up that difference in cash because the bank's only going to lend on their percentage of the value of the appraisal. All right, so uh, that takes care of inspection, loan, and appraisal. Those are the three primary contingencies. There are two others, contingency of the purchase of the buyer's property. So let's say I have a house, I'm selling it, and I want to buy your house, but I got to sell mine to get my little bucket of money so I can buy it. So that is a contingency that gives me the opportunity to get into escrow with your home, but I'm not forced or penalized. If I can't sell my house, I don't lose my earnest money deposit. And then there's also the seller's purchase of replacement property. Sometimes the seller's going, well, I'm, I want to, especially in today's market, sellers generally need to get their house listed and, and under contract or most of the other sellers they go looking for aren't really going to be all that interested in their offers because they're kind of pie in the sky and there's enough offers out there I don't have to take an offer contingent on someone else selling and maybe their buyers are flakes or maybe they're overpriced whatever reason so anyway those are your main contingencies and um, once you remove those contingencies if you decide not to buy that house the odds are you're going to lose your earnest money deposit maybe we'll talk about that next time Thank you.